Hey, this is Joe at Graybench Electronics. Today we are gonna to put together the rack kit from stompboxparts.com. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. All right, we're doing another kit build today. This is the rack kit from Stompbox Parts. Stompbox Parts provided the kit for me to build today. So shout out to them, thank you for that. I put a link to Stompbox Parts to this kit in the description. If you wanna build one for yourself, go check it out. They also have a bunch of other tools and components, all the stuff you need for building pedals. So go check out stompboxparts.com. Once I finish building this rat, I am gonna sell it off on my Reverb store. All the proceeds are gonna to go to benefit the Maui Humane Society. They're a great organization that helps injured or displaced animals who are affected by the uh, recent wildfires in Maui. So if you're watching this video now, the pedal is currently live on Reverb. If you're interested, go check it out and help out some animals. All right, so with every kit build, one of the first things to do is to take an inventory, make sure you received everything you're supposed to receive. Stompbox Parts has the enclosure. It's a 125B pre-drilled enclosure here and all the components are inside the plastic bag. So we're gonna open this up and make sure we have everything we need. The kits are based on the, oh, I'm gonna mess this up, Muroidea. I'm sure that's a reference to something. The Muroidea board from Pedal PCB. It's just a uh, standard Proco rat. So I've printed out the build instructions from Pedal PCB. Stuntbox Parts did tell me that they are working on a more detailed and step-by-step -step instructive document for their kit builds, but right now, we're just gonna use the pedal PCB build docs. So of course we have the PCB itself. We've got some hardware, these are the pots. So we have three potentiometers, which is correct. We'll check the values. We also have pot covers included, which is nice. We've got three rats. These are like the old style Proco rat knobs. We have our foot switch, three pole double throw standard latching foot switch, as well as quarter inch jacks. These appear to be the, uh, I don't know if they're Switchcraft brand, but they're like the 112BX style enclosed jacks and Ecobicon style external nut DC jack, which is nice. Much prefer the external nut so you can disassemble without desoldering. And then we of course have our components that are nicely labeled here actually, which is great uh, because those color codes can be hard to see, especially for people with vision impairment. And we'll double check and make sure we received everything. We also got the, in this case, this is a Texas Instruments OP07 and a eight pin dip socket, which is good. That means you'll be able to switch out ICs. I am definitely gonna include some uh, maybe exotic or boutique ICs with this. So the person who ends up buying it will have some options to try different ICs that they'd like. Some diodes, hookup wire, pre-cut and pre-tinned it looks like. And then also some bus wire for making some other connection, maybe a ground connection, we'll find out. Let's go in here and we're just gonna go step by step and check off, make sure we have all of our components. All right, so there's all the resistors checked off. We're good there. Let's check on our capacitors. We have some multi-layer ceramics here. Uh, so we got 100 picofarad and a 30 or 33 picofarad there. That's good. Film caps, we have two 22 nanofarads, one, two, a one nanofarad cap and a 3.3 .3 nanofarad. And then electrolytics, we have a, or actually a two 4.7 nanofarad, 2.2 microfarad and one microfarad, two of those. Yes, yes, and then 100 microfarad, yes. Diodes, two of the 914 clippers, and 5817 protection diode, correct. JFET, 5458. This looks like maybe a Motorola. Yep, that's a Motorola, 5458 JFET. LM308, I think we have an OP07, right? Yeah, this is OP07. Doesn't matter, they're both the same, and they both share the most important spec, which is uh, that slew rate being really low, I think 0.3 volts, right? Potentiometers, we're supposed to have three audio 100Ks, three eight audio 100Ks, so those are good. And yeah, that's it for that. And then of course, quarter inch input and output, foot switch, DC jack, hookup wire, all that stuff that's not included on the build sheet here. So it looks like we are good on the build docs. This of course is the rat schematic, which we all know and love, pretty standard. Op amp gain stage with a distortion control, hard clippers to ground, simple tone control, and then a JFED buffer on the output. Here's a little picture showing how the wires are gonna hook up. We will use that later to connect our wires on board to the foot switch and jacks the foot switch, DC jack. All right, so time to start assembling. As with most PCB builds, you wanna start from the, the shortest component and build up from that. That usually means resistors first. So we'll start on the resistors and get building.
All right, got the resistors installed on the PCB, so we're gonna move on to the diodes next. We have our two 914 or 4148 clipping diodes. These are actually, they're on semiconductor. These are actually marked 914. And then we have the 5817 rectifier diode slash protection diode. I think what we're gonna do for the clipping diodes here is install some uh, sill sockets so you can swap out for germanium diodes or LEDs or whatever you want uh, instead of having the actual clipping diodes hard soldered to the board, which would make swapping impossible. So we'll put in some sockets here for the clipping diodes. I've shown before with these sockets how you can actually just take a strip of sockets instead of trying to do like one single socket for each side of the diode, just take a strip like this and get rid of the two inside. What I used to do is come in here with these end cutters and just nip off the end of the socket leg at that point and that would let you come in and just slide it in and they the two pins on the outside would, would remain but the inside ones would be clipped off and it would sit where it's supposed to sit in the PCB. But what I've found is that actually these little sockets aren't that tough inside the plastic housing and you can just come in here with needle nose and just kind of push them out like that. So that was kind of like a aha or wow I'm dumb kind of moment just to pull the suckers out. So we're gonna do that. Hopefully I can get this one now that I've already cut it. There we go. Yeah, you just push those sockets out and that leaves it nice and clean and easy to install. So there's our two sockets installed. We can come and just nip our diodes short here. And for this, we don't care about the polarity of these two diodes. As long as they're back to back, that's fine because they're anti-parallel clipping diodes like so. So it doesn't really matter what the silk screen on the board shows. I suppose since we're doing sockets, we can also install a socket for the JFET. I think I might actually wait on this socket because I'm looking at the potentiometer here. Once I have this socket installed and the socket for the IC installed, it might be hard to get my solder tip in there without melting anything. Mm, eh, maybe it'll be okay. We'll risk it. Gotta risk it to get the biscuit. Right, so there's the socket for the JFET. Let's install the socket for the op amp. If you're curious, yeah, this is just standard poster tack. I'm using to hold these boards in place. Crooked sockets is like one of my pet peeves with builds. And so I'm like taking it off and checking, make sure it's straight as possible. Or also sockets that aren't sitting flush to the PCB. That also irks me. So this uh, poster tack helps me keep the socket affixed to the board. I'm also jumping around on solder pads so that I don't add too much heat. You can absolutely melt the plastic. That's part of the uh, socket there. And why not? Let's go ahead and just throw the IC in there since we're here. All right, and we got the 5817 protection diode to put in. I'm just gonna size it up. It looks like just a soft bend will do it. All right, we can install the 30 picofarad, so 33 picofarad compensation capacitor. The capacitor here is marked 33 on one end and then nothing on the other end. I like to turn the labels on capacitors, assuming that they're not polarized or directional. I like to turn the text outwards. So if you're looking at this pedal or trying to repair it, it's easier to see the value of that cap. And this is why it's better to do short components first. And then we have the 100 picofarad, which is over here. So you'll see that the 100 picofarad cap here, this is a 2.54 millimeter or 0.1 inch spacing, lead spacing, but the PCB wants a five millimeter lead spacing here. It's totally fine. Just take your leads, bend them out. Bend them out like so, and then grab on and bend them back over your needle nose like that. Tighten them in a little bit and dress that up a little bit, just get them a little more neat. And then boom, you have roughly 
five millimeter lead spacing, like so. I made one a little big, but that's okay. Put in our box caps. Right, and then we can put in the tallest components, which are the electrolytic caps. We've got so six of these. Yeah, six, yes. This is a Kemet 4.7 microfarad. Watch your polarity. The positive is the long lead. It's marked with a plus on the board here. All right, so there is the RAT PCB more or less assembled. We got to add the pots, obviously, and the hookup wires. Pretty simple circuit, of course. All right, let's move on to the offboard components. So luckily, the Proco RAT has three value potentiometers that are the same value, so we don't have to worry about getting that wrong. Stompbox parts did include three pot covers. For the upper pots here, you really don't need the covers because it's just going to be underneath the quarter inch jacks. Uh, but since they're included, I'm going to put them on here. They do still protect the potentiometers from getting dust inside the open port here. How much dust is there really inside of a pedal, though? I don't know. That's probably not necessary, but they're included, so we'll put them on. These don't really kind of snap on the way the Alpha Pots do. These look like, um, I think these are, I think these are the Vimex ones. The substrate doesn't look quite the same. It's a little darker or amber, but pop that on there. I'm gonna push these on pretty good um, because these will affect how far the PCB sits off of the pots. Just be careful not to slip and bend one of the legs out. You can also see that as you know, they get shipped, the, the legs of the pots will bend. So just for ease of use, come in and bend these back into place. You want them all lined up, equal spacing. That'll make getting the PCB on and off a lot easier. If these aren't straight, the PCB will also sit crooked in the enclosure, which is I guess unsightly, those look pretty good. What I personally do is I'll take the pots here and I'll install them backwards in the enclosure. So one here, actually this is a bad idea. This is what I usually do. Uh, and I'm sure it's fine on this because this is probably drilled with a template. If you're unsure you're drilling and you're not certain if it's even either side, you can do that or you shouldn't do this. You should just do it from the way it's going to sit inside the pedal. If you're certain your drilling is good, then you can flip it around. We're just going to do it on the inside, just to be sure. And then come in and try to line up your pots as straight as possible inside the enclosure. Try not to bend the lead to the pots. Okay, that looks pretty good there. And then we're going to do a test fit to see how and if the PCB will just drop straight on the pins or we have to do a little bend and mold, went right on there. So now I'm gonna look at the PCB and see, okay, is it straight in the enclosure? If not, I can give it a little tweak. And I'm also gonna look this way and see if the enclosure or the PCB is tilted side to side. And pretty good right there. Once I'm confident that the PCB is nice and straight, I'm gonna just make sure I'm fully seated down onto the pots. Double check, looks good. 
I can come in here and solder the pots on. Now some build docs might tell you to do this in a different order, like not solder on the pots. This is just the way I've always done it. There might be very good reasons why you wouldn't put the pots on at this stage. Uh, and maybe you should follow those instructions. I'm just doing it the way I've always done it here. All right, so now we have the pots attached to the PCB. Undo our nuts here. So now we can come in and attach, actually we can do our LED here. So the LED has a little plastic bezel here. This is just going to push inside. So let's see, is there any? Yeah, so this has little plastic tabs that are gonna fold and sort of lock in like that. What I do for LEDs is I push them through the board. You're gonna see the board here is marked anode and cathode or A and K. On top of the board here, A is, a is anode, K is cathode. If you're unsure for your LED, the anode is the long lead. And also the cathode has a flat on the flange for the LED, which is kind of hard to see, but that's the flats on the cathode, the long lead is the anode. So we'll push that through. And then what I do is I just take my needle nose and just put a little bend right at the end of the leads here, just so it doesn't fall out of the board. And then go back in and just sight where my where my LED wants to be. So I can see here that the LED needs to come forward to get to the bezel here. So we can do that. Well, this is a little bit of trial and error. What we might actually want to do is start from the LED side. So I'll take these bends back out. If, it, if the LED lined right up with the board, this would be fine. But since we have to go out, I'm going to start actually here and just eyeball it. I'm gonna make a little bend on the LED legs, like so. So going about 90 degrees there. Like that. PCB back in, and just trying to kind of eyeball where I have to bend up on those leads to get to the board. So we're gonna bend up, I think. Let's try right here, and we'll see. Hopefully these leads are long enough. Let's go. Where are we at? Yeah, it looks pretty close. So I'm just gonna come in here, bend that up so it's straight like that. And we'll see, I'm just gonna hold that in there. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, just fit doing that. So I'm gonna hold that down for a second. I'm just gonna put a nut on here just to hold these in. Just double check I got my polarity right for the LED. We got our LED installed. All right, time to do some hookup wire. So they include with you some nice pre-cut wire lengths here. We have a bunch of short ones. These are gonna connect from the four connections down here to the foot switch, also from the quarter inch jacks to the PCB up here. So we should have at least eight of these. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and a couple extra that might be board connections or they might be uh, just spares. And then we have these long cables that are gonna connect from the switches to the, or from the jacks to the switch. So we can actually look and see, there's our wiring diagram. So you can see here we have one, two, three, four short cables here, one, two, three, four short cables here, and then these long cables are gonna reach. Those are the, the long hookup wire pieces here. This little piece down here will be that bus wire that's included. We got these hookup wires installed. So now we can go back into the board here. So we bend stuff out of the way. Excuse me, back into the enclosure. Not back on just to hold everything in because I want to size up these wires. Some of these wires are definitely going to be too long. You can sort of judge off the wiring diagram. The wires going here to the ground connections for the input jacks, those are really short. You could just take the cable and sort of bend it around and hook up to it right there. Actually, I might do that because these are these are really a, a perfect length. So Stompbox parts, Stompbox parts did their did their uh, homework to get this right, and those look good there. These we might trim down a little bit going to the switch because those really are long. We'll see. We'll see what it looks like when we get there. I don't like excess wire just hanging around, um, but if the wire can tuck out of the way neatly, then I'm okay with it. Let's get our 
clearance shacks in here. Be careful to make sure to orient your quarter-inch jacks the way that they showed in the wiring diagram. Otherwise, you're going to end up soldering onto the tabs on the quarter-inch jack that do not line up with what the wiring diagram here shows. So you can see here the, the angled side of the jack, that's pointing in towards the middle of the pedal on both sides. If you're going to follow the wiring diagram exactly, make sure you set yours up that way. These jacks have two different size nuts. Yes, they do. That's interesting. Okay. So those are in there now. So our wiring diagram says it is the outside two PCB wires that are going to connect to those ground connections. So that's this here. There. Here. One. We can also do our DC jack while we're here. This shows, okay, we got a lock washer on the inside. Have a look at the wiring diagram. And we can orient our DC jack in the same way. So this shows the pin, which is the center pin of the DC jack pointing down. Do the same thing. Might have to put this in before the quarter inch jacks, or at least have to loosen those up. Let's see. No, we can make the turn. Okay, cool. And we'll put our outside note on. Be careful not to tighten this too much because they are only plastic threads. You absolutely can strip those out. I'm just going to finger tighten it for now because we're going to be taking this apart in a sec. I think I am going to trim these wires because there's no way I'd have to put a pretty tight little bend in there. And I just don't like the idea of that. This wire where it needs to be cut. You could definitely do it. It just wouldn't look as neat as what I want to see. So dip that there. So we'll strip those and solder them on in a bit. As for these wires, where these are going. So we have the two on the right here are coming over to this side of the foot switch. And then these two are kind of coming to the center and the left. So we'll actually turn them a little bit and then we'll come up on the side like that, put our foot switch in. I don't like to see lock washers on the outside of the pedals, so I always put the lock washer on the inside. Probably doesn't matter. Just make sure you have your lugs horizontal, not vertical like that, horizontal. All right, so the switch connection is going to go right here. Remember for the foot switches, get in and get out with the heat. Don't hold it there for super long. These wires, the ground connection is going to go to the center. And and the input wire is going to bridge across. We're going to go from this lug to this lug. If we have enough room, I'm probably just going to strip this. It's going to strip this wire. So, we'll so feed this through. Try not to bend this wire. It'll look neater when you're done. Don't push in from this way. Try to pull it. That'll keep it straight. Feed it through the lug here. Let's make sure it's not getting too close to anything there. Just like that. Okay, and we need a little bit of bus wire. They give a whole lot of bus wire here. Only need a tiny bit. So I like to just come in, cut off an approximate size I'll need. A little oversized. Put one bend in it so we know where we're starting. And then come in. Do the other bend, like so. Of course, this is longer than it needs to be. You can always trim it later. Dress it up a bit. Looks good there. We're going to trim those ends off. 
Oh, that's solder. Oh my goodness. I'm so dumb. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's some really soft bus wire. That's interesting. This is solder. Okay. So they include not bus wire. This is solder, which is funny because uh, <laughs> obviously we need solder to assemble it. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Do we really include solder in a kit? Is that really necessary? I guess if you don't have any solder, it's not a bad idea. Just being careful here. I don't want to overheat the foot switch, but I got to get that hole back open. Good enough. Okay, so that's all right. We can use some of the hookup wire as our jumper. It's going to strip a nice piece like that. Use my little hole in the closure there to hold that wire while I tin it up like so. Now we have essentially solid bus wire. It started a stranded wire button because we tinned it up like that. It's essentially solid wire now. That's connections made. These wires, I thought they were pre tinned but I actually not, I'm actually not sure if they are. Um, so it's probably a good idea for your builds to come in here and just go over these wires and tin them again. Sometimes when you use a good soldering iron and good, good solder, you don't necessarily have to pre tin wires. It is the right thing to do. Um, definitely don't need the ends this long. Okay, clean those wires up, make them look a little nicer. Just bend that down. You can also fit them under the board. I'll come back and do a little bit later. Right, we're going to get in there and solder that DC jack, so I'm just going to pull the uh, quarter inch jacks out of the way here. DC jack soldered on. Come in and dress those wires a little bit. Again, not super tight because it's plastic threads. Straight if we can get it. Okay, there's that. And we gotta straighten out our Let's switch here. Sometimes I'll leave the washers off because I think I'll be disassembling it and then I end up not disassembling it. So then I gotta come back and do this. Right. And come in here and dress these wires a little bit. Just make the bends nice and clean. Take these wires and sort of tuck them under the PCB just for a little cleaner look. Doesn't have to be perfect. Looks good. Got to install the JFET. Our output needs buffering. I'm going to leave the leads long on the JFET here for now. Pop that in like so. Some knobs. I guess we should put the nuts and washers on the potentiometers, huh? There we go. Now we're ready for its sound test. Let's get set up for that. All right, got the rat here set up for a little listening test. This is a Telecaster with a humbucker. 
The mic is an SM57. The amp is a 1x12 basement, like Mata basement style amp with all the controls at noon. And the controls at noon on the RAT. Let's go ahead. This is the clean sound. So you can hear the tone control works sort of like the original Rats where it gets brighter as you wind it counterclockwise. Sounds like a rat, no doubt about it. Gainy, really gainy. Nice usability on the tone control. Sounds good to me. All right, so just wrapping up the build here, pedal sounds great. I'm going to include some extra ICs for experimentation's sake. So I've got some old, actually these aren't that old, but they will sound just the same. National Semiconductor LM308s. And we'll also throw in an old PMI OP07. This one's from 1985. Throw one of those in there as well. So there's two ICs to experiment with. And just for fun, I'll throw in also a couple of red LEDs, three millimeter red LEDs for replacement for the clipping diodes that should uh, make the pedal a little louder and also not quite as gainy. Those two pieces will go along with the pedal. Just stuff them down in here. Whoever buys it will get those and they'll be able to do a little experimentation. Just a reminder, this pedal is for sale on Reverb and all the proceeds are going to the Maui Humane Society. Last but not least, of course, is to sign the pedal. All right, that was the assembly of the rack kit from stompboxparts.com. Don't forget this pedal is available for sale right now. Check for the reverb link in the description. All the proceeds are gonna to go to benefit the Maui Humane Society. Thank you to Stompbox Parts for providing the kit for this video. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. I'm Joe from Great Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching. <laughs>